to all my subscribers, viewers, and YouTube friends. Thanks for your support over the past eight months. Without you, my channel would not have gotten off the ground. Thank you all. You are awesome. Welcome back. Here we are in 2020, 50 years after the first moon landing, and there are people who think that space isn't real, the ISS is fake, and NASA lies because it's in the name. The first two videos were made in response to their content creator's incredulity and ignorance of word meanings, and the third was a look at the human body and zero-g. This first video was inspired by a response to a content creator whose personal incredulity and closed mind would not allow him to see the obvious. Start and finish right here. I'm on my computer. Look, Mom, no hands. You have hands. <laughs> no feet. Roomy. All right. Welcome to the International Space Station. Here's a tour. We're starting right now in Columbus. And if you look. Okay. So it was edited at the 29 second mark. Um, what's your point? Oh, I see. You read a comment from someone in a group that said this was one continuous shot. Got it. In the original video linked below, these two men are floating in and out of rooms and alcoves where we can see the ceilings, the sides, and the floors for 42 minutes. He flips the tablet around and sometimes lets it go for approximately 22 minutes. And at the 708 mark, he has to reorient the picture on the tablet. You can see the picture of the ISS on the tablet the entire time, reflections and all. I know people can do some incredible realistic things with CGI, but uh, not sure they could pull that one off. That can't be green screen or them being on a harness the entire time. But what do I know? I don't have the NASA lies because reasons mindset. There we go. So we have full of cameras up here. And of course, robotic workstation, just like in the lab. And there's a beautiful Earth. So you can hang out. You see the arm? I don't know if you can see the arm there. It's so no, the Earth did not forget to spin. It spins at 15 degrees per hour or half the speed of the hour hand on a clock. If you can see it spin in an approximately 60 second clip, you are Superman. It's on the top, or sorry, on the bottom of node two. It's connected to it right there. And that's the position that we use to grapple the cargo vehicles, SpaceX and Cygnus and HTV. And it goes in right on node two, just a a little bit forward of where it's where it's grappled to note two is where we birth those vehicles and if you come right here then you can see to the right is the you keep using the word i don't think it means what you think it means parallax the effect whereby the position or direction of an object appears to differ when viewed from different positions there is no parallax because they are viewing the arm from only one location, the window. Is a progress 
Yeah, oh, that's my species. It is. That is Tonto's progress right there. Oh, it's a Soyuz. <laughs> I know that. Oh, he's giving you a hard time. He's a cargo, so, you know. <laughs> no, it is a Soyuz. It is a Soyuz because it says so on there. And it is a, uh, it's the one that uh, the 39S crew came up on. 17,000 miles an hour in low Earth orbit is not the same as 17,000 miles an hour on Earth. If you check the bottom left corner, look at the clouds in relation to the ISS. There's your movement right there. And then behind that is a progress. And uh, not just a Russian cargo vehicle. And as you go around, that's pretty much uh, what you can see out here. You got solar arrays, of course, on each side. If you go over this side all the way over, you can see the solar array on the port side. Here you kind of view what it is like from outside out here on the station. But this is the best part out here, though, is looking down at Earth. We try to do that as much as possible. Unfortunately, we don't get near as much time as we'd like. They make us do work. Let's go on back. What we're going to do, we're going to head to... Why do I do this to myself? Anyone can clearly see movement if they look at the bottom of the solar array. You really need to get your eyes checked. It boggles the brain that some people continue to call things fake simply because they either lack the will or refuse to understand. The things in this video were easily seen. In fact, I had left a comment for the person who made the ISS fakery video. While working on this video, he replied back. Here is my initial comment, his reply, and my response back. I am currently experiencing a head cold, which is why on the recordings my voice sounds a little nasally. But I'm getting better every day and will soon be 100% better. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. This content creator had several problems. Two of those problems were NASA and rockets in space. And well, I think you will be able to see another problem as soon as the video starts. Folks, sorry I'm doing this off uh, my cell phone. I just found this uh, video and I had to do this uh, quick. Uh, but I just found it too funny and it's fresh on my mind. I understand. You could have easily written down what you wanted to say, downloaded it, and put it through an editor while adding commentary. But who am I to criticize? So, the deception of NASA. Uh, I mean, it's so unbelievable. I mean, we know that the word NASA stands for something. Yes, NASA is an acronym for National Aeronautic Space Administration. Uh, but if you actually take the word NASA itself, if you look it up uh, in Hebrew, it means to deceive. So, of course that they're deceiving. Here is what NASA really means in Hebrew. And here is the Hebrew word for to deceive. And this video is funny because they titled it, Here is your stupid rocket from launch to orbit. Because these glow people want to fight this agenda. I mean, they're trying to hold on to their globe. Uh, no fish eye, CGI, or NASA lies. They, uh, you mean you, you named it that. It is from a video you mirrored of a video of 
a Delta rocket launch from December 11, 1998. Well, let's take a look at this thing now. Notice the rocket. <clears throat> it's got boosters and no uh, oops sorry about that sorry my computer just went um. oh for goodness sake why are you recording it on your cell phone from your computer as I said earlier that is what downloading and editing are for Anyways, let me just play this thing and what I want you to notice is that uh, you're going to notice how this rocket flies so smooth. It's called aerodynamics, but please do go on. Okay, but take a look at this rocket really clearly. Notice that it has uh, just a, a, a top piece that's a little bit wider than everything else. And it's basically a whole cylinder and it doesn't have any wings or fins or any of that sort. It has the rocket boosters and that's it, but it doesn't have no fins, okay? And I'll tell you why that's important as we see this going. You mean the top where the payload to be delivered into orbit is? By the way, this rocket doesn't have no fins as the solid rocket booster engines are tilted to keep it in a stabilized, controlled ascent. I'll mention a couple of things on the way. And counting. The 12, floor itself, 11, there's no porthole for the, nine, the eight, fire to go seven, through and six, get up through the side. Five, four, so that's uh, that's two, odd. I've never one. seen that. Everything just burn right there on the we spot. There are different launch pads for different rockets. Some have plume tunnels, trenches, or water jets. If you notice, this rocket is suspended above the launch pad and it looks like there are flame deflectors around it. We have liftoff of NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter as we continue to so explore switch the mysteries of the Red Planet. Video and switch again. View so. from the second stage of the Boeing Delta II vehicle as we continue to rise. Sorry again. 20 seconds after cell phone. liftoff. So here we go. It's starting to fly Everything through. Continues Look, to go well. and it passes the clouds. It just passed the cloud. Everything now, with all that thrust, those clouds solid, are not moving. No one pays attention to that. Those clouds are staying still. They didn't move at all with all that thrust that went through it. Okay. Did you think that there would be a lot of wind coming off the solid rocket booster engines and it would blow the clouds apart? Well, bless your heart. Attitude disturbances, guidance controlling nicely. Main engine boats are on yours, continue to burn well. We expect to see these boosters burn out and jettison at about 64 seconds after launch, coming Booster up in about 10 all seconds. All solids beginning to tail off now. And we have burnout on all solids. Solids are tailing off at this time, and we have jettison of the solids. And okay, switch a nice X. The symbolism in this uh, whole uh, on all four Freemason stuff. You can look it up. Do your own Main research. I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm not going to find all these little things for you. Nominal. No one asked you to find anything conspiratorial. But conspiratorial minds always find conspiracy in everything. So, now that the rocket boosters are completely all gone, the rocket is stable. Again, a beautiful view from the second stage of the Delta vehicle. There's no twisting. To rise now, one minute, the Earth will be having off. like a view of the Earth like spinning around in circles because the rocket is actually the next event spinning because the, the camera is on the rocket. Is what we should see. Well. But vehicle this thing is flying as if it had miles, wings. Distance, now, rockets do not act this way. It has no view. motion, Earth slim as we rise twisting, above the with going all the way up, orbiter, as if it had wings, just like a plane. Dude, you have been watching too many model rocket videos, haven't you? This rocket was never unstable. No rocket launch video I have ever seen 
with cameras on the rocket or without, has spun really fast. Rockets like this one don't need wings because they do not fly like airplanes. Their purpose is to deliver a payload and then eventually plummet back to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere. NASA, why are you lying to us? Two minutes, 15 us? seconds after launch. Everything continues you to You think look people good. can't see this stuff? Your stage continues to burn very well. Look it up, people. NASA, in Hebrew. Flight back to right deceive. at the uh, nominal predict. Mm. It's a whole big lie. Keep it real. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. The last video today was more education than entertainment. It was an illustration of what real weightlessness in space looks like versus a zero-g plane and showed how a body reacts while on a zero-g plane. When you want to get off the darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Welcome back. Today I take another look at the International Space Station and the claims that the astronauts are not in space, that they move around using harnesses on studio sets or film on parabolic flights using green screens so that CGI can be applied after the fact. But as I showed you in ISS can't be real because editing and have you seen the live screw ups that can't possibly be the case. With the help of OK Go Upside Down Inside Out BTS How We Did It, I will show further evidence that the International Space Station is not fake and that it is in low Earth orbit as we speak. In the following clip from the video, one of the most detailed ISIS tour, you will see astronaut Steven Swanson giving a tour. Here is what the zero-g plane looks like on the runway and on the inside. However, you will see that the International Space Station is much different as it consists of various long tubes connected to one another with alcoves and rooms coming off the sides of it. So from here, if we go starboard, we go into the airlock. If again, if you look on here, it's just starboard. That right there is the airlock, and there's two parts to the airlock. The closest part to us, which would be this part right here, is called the equipment lock, and the most starboard part is called the crew lock. And the crew lock is where you actually go out of when you do a spacewalk. It's what actually depresses down the vacuum, and that's where you open the hatch. So we come in here. This is now into the equipment lock right here. And the idea of the equipment lock, of course, is where the equipment is. And then it's also where the suits are, and this is where we actually suit up. And we have these little structures right here that the suits are on. And they're called ADAS, which is an acronym. And I don't even know what it stands for, but it's an acronym, E-D-D-A. Uh, but that's where the suits are on. And we actually have them on here uh, to, when we get in, we can pop off basically the pants, put the pants on, and we climb up in here with the helmet off, and we get on in the suit, and we're all ready to go. Uh, the person who's helping us get the uh, suit up will take us off and stick us in to the crew lock over here which again right now it was full of a bunch of stuff and then once I, once, but that would be empty of course for a national spacewalk we close this hatch right here and uh, depress this part now to vacuum and open the hatch it's down that way is where the hatch is where you open and you can see there's all sorts of equipment we have this is good in storage right now because we're not going to do a spacewalk for a little bit so we just have it more stowed right now for everything on the, on the spacewalk side That is unfortunate. Are you sure it's going to be 
<laughs> if you go down from here, which would be Nader, in our speak, it's hard to show on this guy because you really can't see it. So basically we're at the lab and then we're going down towards Earth. If you look at it that way. So it doesn't really show it on here because it's blocked by the uh, Node 2. But if you go down right here, so we would be going from Node 1 down Nader. This is actually called the PMM. And that's really us too, is a big stowage area. What we have down here is just pure stowage. That's what it's for. And we have all our uh, supplies, food, extra equipment, other stuff like that that we need to have for months on board in case another vehicle doesn't come to resupply us. We need all a bunch of, bunch of equipment. So you can kind of look at that and see that that's just a bunch of stowage area. And it's also where we keep our trash. You know, we just can't throw the trash out on the curb every week up here. So we have to keep it. And last time, when uh, Cygnus left, it had about uh, we had about 25 bags worth of trash that we threw out. And the bags are pretty good sized bags. They're like big, think of big hefty bags of trash that we threw out on Cygnus. Uh, so uh, that's where we have to keep that. Besides our new stuff, we have to also keep trash down there too. Uh, if we go to the port side, I think you can see that on here. The port side is called Node 3, and again, it's very similar to uh, Node uh, 1 and 2, and it's not even on this picture, so that makes it more difficult. <laughs> but I might even have another one that shows it, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's to the uh, port side. Blame the guy who downloaded the picture. Yeah, blame the guy who downloaded the picture. Exactly, and it's not on that one either. Wow, look at all that. All right. That was a three minute, 48 second long clip. As you saw, astronaut Steven Swanson floated in and out of rooms with floors, sides, and ceilings exposed to the camera. Here is why one continuous shot would be impossible on a zero G plane or in a movie studio. To make our zero gravity video for Upside Down and Inside Out, we flew in a plane that basically goes like this. Each of these humps is called a parabola, and on each parabola what you feel is 20 seconds of double gravity while the plane is throwing you into the air. Then you feel weightless for about 27 seconds while you go up over the top and kind of sail back towards the ground. Then at the bottom the plane catches you again and you feel 20 more seconds of double gravity. After the whole maneuver is done, you've lost a lot of altitude, so it takes about four or five minutes for the plane to gear back up to do it all over. Weightlessness is not like a light switch. The gravity kind of fades in and out, especially at the beginning of each parabola, so sometimes you feel weightless before everything is floating around in the air. Each take took about 40 minutes. In the beginning of the video, you can see that we're actually in double gravity, and then there are eight scenes of weightlessness, each taking place on their own parabola. If you watch the video carefully, you can actually see where each of these scenes starts and stops by noticing the moments that gravity come back for a second. Here they are. The following clip is from Fire in Zero G. It illustrates what happens during a zero G flight and the effects it has on one's body. Instead, the plane starts climbing at a steadily increasing angle. With no windows inside, it's impossible to tell that this is happening, and all you feel is pressed into the floor with a force 1.8 times your body weight. This is because the plane's acceleration is directed upwards and perpendicular to the floor. And it makes standing very difficult. Not only are you nearly twice as heavy, all the blood drains from your head and into your feet, which made me pretty dizzy. Ah! <laughs> so weak! Ah. Lying on your back is much more comfortable, and we're advised not to move our heads around and look straight ahead, because in Hyper-G, our vestibular system is hypersensitive to movement, which can lead to motion sickness, and that's why this is sometimes called the Vomit Comet. Once the plane is climbing at about 50 degrees, the engines are ramped down and the plane is put into a parabolic trajectory. It's at this point that you start experiencing weightlessness. I can feel myself getting lighter. Whoa, that is such a strange feeling. 
That is so weird. The plane and you are still moving upward, but you are accelerating downward. There's Diana. She's the physics girl. Then the plane oh peaks goodness. and starts Here, uh, speeding up again towards the Earth. This is totally strange. The whole time, the plane is accelerating toward Earth with the same acceleration as a free-falling object in vacuum. The pilots have to very skillfully adjust the thrust to perfectly balance air resistance and maintain exactly this acceleration. Okay. Oh my goodness. After 22 seconds of weightlessness, the pilots pull out of the dive, again subjecting us to hyper-G as the plane accelerates upwards. In total, we performed 13 of these zero-G parabolas, plus one Martian gravity and two moon gravity parabolas. Amazing things can be done with CGI and green screen technology these days, but filming in one continuous shot is very, very rare in movies and on TV, as it takes a lot of rehearsal time to get it exactly right. Time is a luxury on Earth, but on the ISS it is precious as they have other more important work that needs to be done and not an infinite amount of time to do it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Well, this is all for this installment of A Glober Mom 2019 Retrospective. Please join me next week for part 7 when we will take a look at a few more of my videos. Please consider becoming a Patreon. I have several tiers available, but as little as $1 will help my channel. Thank you for watching, and as always, you are awesome. See you in the next video.